dovresti sposare Angela. She says that you should marry Angela. <laughs> Angela è carina, Angela è molto intelligente, eh? And Rosa says Angela is so smart and so sweet and may I add warm and spontaneous and so beautiful. <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks, Eva. But uh, I wish you two matchmakers would lighten up, huh? Angela and I are housekeeper and boss and nothing else. And un bello uomo, una bella donna N nella, nella questa cassa e niente <laughs> and Rosa says beautiful woman, handsome man in the same house and nothing <laughs> nothing <laughs> stupido <laughs> hello, Aunt Rosa is all of us isn't she, mm -hmm. just calling him out yep <laughs> welcome back to hey yo, away the who's the boss podcast, I'm Tori I'm Kevin. And we have, uh, why Sorry. was that a question? I, I don't know. <laughs> we are here guard. to rewatch and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss? The episode we're going to cover today is season four, episode 14. It's called All in the Familia. I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly. I think so. Pretty the close. Familia. La Familia. Familia. And I'm going to say that that is a play on words. For the popular sitcom in the 70s, All in the Family. Yeah. It first aired on Tuesday, January 12th, 1988. And the TV Guide summary says the Maselli's want Angela to join the family. But when Tony nixes a wedding, cousin Maurizio is happy to take his place. Mm. I mean, that's kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess. Well, it's, it's all right. It's, it's as if like they were ready to set up a wedding and Tony said no. This episode was well, written by hang John. On, can I read mine? Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. You always first. forget. I'm sorry, I you, do. You forget the best. <laughs> yes. You want to talk about summaries that make no sense. Okay, let's hear it. Um, well, the first one is, Tony's traditional family from Italy is coming for a visit. Angela tries her hardest to impress its members until the aunt demands that she will marry Tony's cousin, Maurizio. Mauri, Mauri, why can't I say his name? I, Maurizio. I, uh, Maurizio. So that one's not bad. No. I mean, that's kind of what it is, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And then there's Tony's careful efforts to prepare the Bowers for a visit from his Sicilian uncle, Aldo's family, prove insufficient to avoid unpleasantness. <laughs> Grum, uh, Grumpo, Grumpu, what is that? Is that a gr grandpa, Italian for grandpa? I have no idea. G-R-U-M-P-U. Grumpu, <laughs> <laughs> bullish Aunt Rosa, not only scolds Tony for remaining single when Angela makes Maybe clear... Maybe this was supposed to be grumpy. Okay. Now I lost my concentration. I'm sorry. Aunt Rosa I'm sorry. not only scolds Tony for remaining single when Angela makes clear matching them is no option. She has Aldo announce her engagement to the youngest visitor, Tony's adoring cousin, Maurizio. Maurizio. <laughs> Maurizio. Maurizio. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know what I just read. I'm confused. Um, okay, so this episode is written by John Donnelly okay. and Clay Graham. Now, when this episode starts, you're kind of confused as to what's going on. Because yeah. Tony's like, okay, Angela, are you ready? And she's like, I'm ready. He says, this is it. And then he like goes up to her, and they kind of embrace. And then they're doing little, they're, he's like, tighter, tighter, more passion. <laughs> <laughs> and I immediately and then, think it's going down. Right. Like, all right, this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. It's a little awkward and, and yeah. stunted, but well, okay, I'll take it. And then you realize that he's prepping her for how to <coughs> greet, oh, there's some dog coughing, how to greet his family. So he's get, doing the kiss on each cheek and the big tight hug. He's like, he says, okay, now, are you ready for this last move? I call it the butterfly flutter. And it goes something like this. And he goes over to her, and he hugs her, and then, oh, no, I'm sorry. He does it to himself first. He, right, he like, shows hugs her. himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he pats his back, his hands on his back. <laughs> and then, I do the butterfly flutter, I think. I think our kids do it, too. Probably. Is that an, I don't think that's an, necessarily an Italian thing. Yeah. More of just seeing. It's and, just a, an awkward, I don't right, know how to I'm, hug people thing. <laughs> exactly. I'm uncomfortable with hugging you, so I'm just going to rapidly pat your back until it's over. So Mona comes in. She asks if the family's there yet, and Tony says, any minute now. And Angela goes up to Mona and tries the double kiss on her and the hug. Mona says, you've never kissed me like that before, and Angela's all excited, and then Mona says, don't do it again. I know. Mona. I know. Poor Please be nice Angela. for a minute. 
Now, Samantha and uh, Jonathan come down the stairs. Jonathan is excited because he has what he thinks is an Italian flag <laughs> that he's going to present to Tony's family. Tony looks at the flag and he says, I don't remember there being a rooster. And then he looks at the tag and he says, this is Uganda. <laughs> Uganda. Right. And Jonathan's very upset because he's been ripped off by whoever sold him that flag. The Ugandan flag. Yeah. So there's a, the door, there's a ring at the doorbell or somebody's knocking at the door. I don't remember. And he's like, this is it. They're here. So he says, remember, flutter, hug, flutter, hug. <laughs> So he opens up the door, and standing there is his uncle Aldo, who we've met before, played by Vito Scotti. His aunt Rosa, who is a new character, she's played by Antonia Ray. Richard Greco, who you may know from 21 Jump Street. Yep. And then Este Chandler, who plays cousin Laura, who the poor thing really has zero storyline in this whole episode, and then we never see her again. I know. It, it, was, it was odd. And they're standing there very serious, and then they get all excited, and Aunt Rosa comes in. She hugs Tony. She's butterfly, butterfly fluttering all over the place. She hugs Tony. She hugs Sam. And then when Angela goes up to... Tony introduces Angela to the family. Oh, first Jonathan and Mona get in there. And then when Angela goes up to Aunt Rosa... She's trying her hardest with the Italian. She's really hoping that Aunt Rona's going to give her a warm hug. And Aunt Rosa just puts out her hand. Yeah, for a little hand. Goes in for the handshake. Now, who you know who's missing here is Aldo's daughter. So there was the episode, which I don't remember her name, and I don't remember the name of the episode. So uh -huh. um, I'm doing really so we got that going right. for us. <laughs> but she came to America. She was going to be... Um, she was going to marry oh, yes, somebody, right. an arranged marriage. Yes. And yes. then Tony stepped in and said no. And then the girl decided she was going to stay in America and run part of Uncle Aldo's company. Maybe it didn't work out. Apparently, there was a falling out. Yeah. And they no longer speak. Yeah, something it's, like that. Yeah. <laughs> you think she'd be here if, since right, if he's in town. Right, if her dad's in town, you think that we would see her. Yeah. Maybe, oh, so that is the actress that we realized was like a huge celebrity in Spain, I believe. So oh, that's it's right. possible that she was way too busy to do this show by that's then. That's a good point. Okay, so um, Tony tells Aunt Rosa, you look as beautiful as ever. And then Aunt Rosa says something in Italian, and Uncle Aldo says, she says you're still full of it. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony is surprised that Uncle Aldo is speaking English. Because the last time we saw him, he only spoke Italian. And Tony didn't know what he was saying. So and the, then they had the to daughter quick, had to translate. Quickly explain. Right. That, so now, that he speaks now, English. now we need someone here who understands English. So it's going to be Uncle Aldo. I guess um, the kids do also. But yeah. So he says, you know, you're speaking English. And Uncle Aldo says, yes, as a businessman, you must learn English and Japanese. Mm. Especially Japanese. Yeah. So I can't, I can't really tell if that's, I mean, it's. If somebody it's, can tell us what the significance of that is. Oh, well, no, the significance is, is that he's basically saying that Japanese men are b businessmen. And right. so, but I don't know if it's, it's necessarily a or it's racially insensitive. Right. I mean, I feel like it's kind of racially insensitive because it would be a stereotype, but then it's also not necessarily a negative stereotype. So I mean, were Japanese coming in and buying up a lot of companies, or I mean, what was going? I don't know what was going on at the time. I, yeah, I don't really know either. But I know that you know there is just sort of the Japanese businessman stereotype. No, no, yeah, right, so. right, right. Aunt Rosa notices that Uncle Aldo like touches his mustache or something, and she smacks his hand away, and then like says something to him about him touching it. <laughs> and Mona says, "Aldo, I thought you were the big cheese in your family." And he says, I am the big cheese, but she is the main mozzarella. Main, main mozzarella. Mozzarella. <laughs> mozzarella. Mozzarella. Uh, so everybody kind of laughs. Now, Tony introduces his baby cousins. So this is little Laura and little Maurizio. Mm. He hasn't seen them, I guess, since if he's met them at all, he hasn't seen them since they were babies. And Mona says, oh, you've got some good genes looking at the two of them. And then she looks at Maurizio and says, I really like his jeans, too. Like the ones he's wearing. Like the ones he's, and then, yeah. of course, she gets pulled away because, you know, Angela walks her out of the room because she's saying inappropriate things. 
Grandma's t- talking again. <laughs> Grandma got into the Campari early. Yeah. Maurizio says to Tony, it's so nice to finally meet my American cousin. Right. A cleaning executive. I know. I love that line. <laughs> a cleaning executive. And Angela even kind of giggles a little bit in the background. And like Maurizio is not saying it as an insult at all. Like, no, I think he truly he really, is. Yeah. Right, right. This, Tony is someone he's heard stories about and t- somebody that he definitely looks up to. And then once again, we get another reference to Lee Iacocca. Yes. When he says, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'm the Lee Iacocca of squeegees. <laughs> Uh, and then Sam says to Laura, I really envy you for going to college in Rome. What are you learning? And she says, Renaissance art. She's like, Michelangelo, Da Vinci. And Sam says, I have a poster of Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. And Laura says, that is a work of art. I see. So Sam says that Laura's bunking with her, and she takes her upstairs to um, get settled. She tells Jonathan, I'll give you 100 lira if you carry the bags upstairs. Jonathan's very excited, and he's like, Maurizio, how much is that? And Maurizio says, it's about a nickel. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, money's money. The classic Jonathan, money's money, you know, (laughs) gotta hustle. (laughs) He's always hustling. (laughs) So Angela asks the family, would you like something to drink? Can I get you Campari Espresso Cappuccino? I had to look up with what Campari is. What is it? It's an Italian like liqueur, kind of like, it's just a cocktail. Mm. Like people use it to make little Italian sodas and stuff oh. that um, are alcoholic. Okay. And well, that's what I would have gone with. Yeah, I agree. Let's get this party started. All right. All right. But it's like alcohol or coffee or coffee. Right. And then they say Diet Pepsi. So all four of them want Diet Pepsi. And Tony's like, well, when in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> Must be a thing. Like, yeah. oh, we're in America. We got to drink Diet Pepsi. Right. Now, Angela goes to get them, and Mona says that she's going to help her. So I feel like at some point there was a scene between Mona and Angela in the kitchen that we don't see. Yeah. Because really, right, there's. Right, because what is the significance of Yeah, like, going why into does the Mona kitchen? need to leave the room and why does she need to go with Angela into the kitchen? Mo- unless they just wanted to get Mona out so that she wouldn't hear any of this conversation, but I don't really think it would have been that big of a deal. Yeah, for and her it's to be like an before. abrupt cut to them on the couch. Right. I don't know. You're, I think you're right. Yeah, probably. The, I mean, I can't find any. I, there are quite a few scenes cut out of this episode that are very hard to find so i wouldn't be surprised so tony asks aunt rosa how's your health how's the farm how's the family and of course it's always like uh you know doom and gloom with aunt rosa Mm. she just wants to know why are you not married (laughs) right out of the gate she's saying in italian basically like where are the um maselli bambinos that's right Aldo is translating all this. So Aldo asks him, you know, she He's wants to know Bambino, where He's got a Bambino, Samantha. Right, he does. He, he, she wants to know where I don't have any babies. And he says, oh, well, I mean, it's not, it's not possible. And Aldo gets very upset. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> is it possible you were injured during baseball? Yeah. <laughs> and then Tony's like, oh, oh no, no. It's, it's possible. He just means that he doesn't have anyone to have a baby with. Well, Aldo thinks that uh, Tony broke his penis <laughs> playing <laughs> baseball. <laughs> he thinks poor Tony in America is now impotent. So Aldo, uh, Tony's trying to change the subject off of uh, babies and his testicles and says, you know, since you're here in America this Friday, I'm going to cook you guys a big Italian dinner. And then Aldo tells Tony, well, I have a very big surprise for you. Mm -hmm. And Tony's like, interesting. Like, you know, how big could it be? You got it on the plane. And Aldo's, you know, like, just wait, you'll find out. So now we cut to Tony and Maurizio sharing the attic <laughs> oh yeah right so what Which, do you think yeah go sorry ahead. go ahead i'm trying to think of what's happening here so oh well, they're in an attic and they're and and so yeah two beds somehow they got beds no no i know i'm trying to think of the sleeping arrangement so prop so samantha took laura in her room right then tony probably gave his room to aunt rosa Right. Uncle Aldo, where do you think he is? Um, Jonathan's room? Jonathan's Jonathan's maybe with Angela. Angela. And then the two of them are up here in the attic. Yeah. In the attic. This is ridiculous. (laughs) I mean, there's probably no air conditioning, no heating. (laughs) Right. It is January. And they're both up there in the attic. And they're just in an attic that's probably (laughs) about 20 degrees. (laughs) Hmm. I don't know. Tony looks comfortable. That's true. So he's sleeping. 
And Maurizio is just sitting there staring at him. So let, wait, I'm going to talk a little bit more about <laughs> Richard Greco here. I'd say he's most well known for 21 Jump Street. When he did Who's the Boss, he had only done two other things prior to that. An episode of One Life to Live and an episode of a show called Rags to Riches Mm. in 1987. Then he went on to do Facts of Life. 21 Jump Street came soon after that. He was on a television show named Booker. I feel like I remember that. Booker. He played Dennis Booker. Yeah. No, um, wait, maybe I'm getting that mixed up with Becker, the Ted Danson Maybe, Vincent that's show. what I'm, I think I was actually thinking. A TV show called Marker in 1995. And then it looks like he's still, yeah, I mean, he's still acting. He has stuff um, in post-production stuff his, right now. His nickname is the King of 21 Jump Street. Oh, okay. So uh, that's he's internet really movie known database for... telling me that, so don't <laughs> so that's a lie. take that for what it's right. worth. And then, oh, he was in 22 Jump Street. I forgot they made a movie or rebooted that or something. Yeah. Um, oh, it was yeah, a movie, it was right? Seth Rogen, right? Yes, mm-hmm. it was a movie in 2014, I see. I'm going to say here, Richard Greco's accent is probably the worst oh. <laughs> Italian accent I've ever heard on TV. And he's half Italian, but, you know, he's, it's American. Yeah, but Italian. I looked it up and he was, yeah, he was born in New York. So he's, you know, I'm sure he had relatives that maybe had an accent, but... This accent is not fantastic. And um, I spoke to someone who worked on the show. He said that he never, he, you know, Tony Danza has a reputation of getting angry. And he said that he personally hardly ever saw Tony get angry, maybe huh. just a couple of times. And the one of the times that he referenced is in this episode. Apparently, he was a bit frustrated with Richard Greco's Italian accent. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, I think also... He wasn't he wasn't remembering the lines very well. Uh, so he said that was one of the one. That's one no of the good because he saw Tony him likes to, fu- to fire and, through the show. Yes, so that probably kind of that's the thing too with being um, a guest star on this show or any show when the people work so well together and they have a cadence and they have mm-hmm. a routine. You got to get in there and jump in, you know, like it's sink or swim, because if you aren't able to keep up with them, that's probably got to feel terrible. So kudos to all the other actors that probably did, like Mason and Jesse and uh, the girls that are on the show. Okay. Maurizio was just sort of staring at Tony. (laughs) Yeah. Again, back to that. (laughs) Yeah. And Tony wakes up and he says, was I snoring? And he said, yeah, but not as bad as Aunt Rosa. (laughs) (laughs) Poor Aunt Rosa. I know. But we do know that Tony is a pretty big snorer. And he asks, what time is it? And Maurizio says, well, it's seven o'clock Italy time. It's one o'clock here. And then Tony's like, okay, good night. But Maurizio says, you know, ever since I was a little boy, I idolized you. You're my fame. You're my famous cousin in America. Mm. And now Tony's like, oh, you know what? I can sleep later. Yeah, I mean, come on, right? Like, keep this going. And he says, when he was a child, he used to watch films of him in the playoffs. And he says he was dynamite. Mm. So dynamite. <laughs> and even though he doesn't play ba- uh, baseball anymore, like he's still, you know, a pretty big uh, role model to Maurizio. And then Tony's like, you know what? I let me see. I probably have something up here for you. So he digs around in the attic, <laughs> and he pulls Should out stuff and random stuff in the attic. <laughs> he pulls out a cardinal's cap and he hands it to Maurizio. And Maurizio's like, oh, I couldn't possibly take this. And he's like, of course you can. So he's excited. He's going to wear it in the village <laughs> and around the vineyards. <laughs> he's never going to take it off. I and know. Tony says, well, I'm glad that I didn't give you my sweat socks then. <laughs> and it's a filthy hat. Well, it's been up in the attic for who knows how long. Yeah, and, yeah who knows what's been going on in that hat. He just puts it right on his head. <laughs> but I like that Tony has a little space in the attic for his stuff. Yeah. He doesn't have to keep all of it in Probably his room. He keeps his baseball card there. Yeah, maybe. He says that his stomach is on Italy time, so he's a bit hungry. And Tony says, all right, well, then let's go downstairs and get some food. Then he asks Maurizio, do you have any girlfriends back in Italy? <laughs> <laughs> like what does that have to do with anything? I don't know. He says yes, lots of girlfriends, right? Yeah, he says yeah, I got lots of girlfriends. I'm a Michelli. I mean, that's like, but basically, it's PG dude talk, right? It's like you get laid a lot in right. Italy, and yes, I have sex all the time. <laughs> and then let's go downstairs. Come on, let's go. Yes, trans. Or Tony for the says age. hey or something. 
<laughs> so now downstairs, Angela is also still awake with Aunt Rosa, who is rolling dough for biscuits. I know. What's going on here? And, and Angela's got the pink robe going. Of course, the little pink robe. And Angela's motioning to her, like, can I try? Aunt Rosa looks at it and then, like, slams down the rolling pin and is like, okay. So Angela gets in there, and in true Angela style, she's like daintily rolling the pin back and forth. Mm, the dough is good. barely even moving. So Aunt Rosa is a little annoyed, and she's like, N- no. And what are they making, a pizza? No, they're making biscuits oh, for biscuits, the morning. Oh, biscuits, right, right, right. That's so right. Aunt Rosa grabs her hands and forcefully starts to push into the dough. She says to Angela, she, sh- she motions with her arms up, she says, make more strong. Then she motions to her chest, make more big. (laughs) And then Angela goes to town on that. (laughs) I know. (laughs) She's like, she's like, is that right? (laughs) All right. Well, here we go. And she starts rolling the dough. And Aunt Rosa's laughing hysterically. Now, Tony and Maurizio walk in. Like, everyone's, no one's surprised that everyone's awake at one o'clock in the morning. I know. Well, it's weird. They're all on Italy time. Yeah. Tony says, look at this. Angela's cooking and Aunt Rosa's smiling. What is wrong? <laughs> I know. Like, what happened? And Maurizio notices, oh, you're making fresh biscuits. It's going to be just like the farm. And Angela's now romanticizing about how wonderful the farm life must be. Like, getting back to basics, cooking from scratch, working the soil, feeding the chickens. And Tony's like, yeah, yeah, we, we get the picture. So she, <laughs> I love how... Um, welcoming Angela always is to random members of Tony's family who decide to just come to this house. And <laughs> like, no one gets a hotel ever. Right, right. Everyone stays there. They didn't have room for Nick. He had to go in the garage, but they have room for these four people. Well, yeah, man, Nick. Right. Mm. Yeah. Now, Aunt Rosa's looking at uh, Angela, looking at Tony, and she's thinking, hmm, wait a minute here. So she makes a mention about how Angela looks like Farrah Fawcett. Right. And then Tony starts laughing. I know. I have this to isn't s- nice. No. I have to say, Angela's hair looks fantastic here for it being one o'clock in the morning. Like, I like her natural hair look better than her done up hair. But I wonder if at the time I would have been like, oh, her hair looks really flat because I was used to enormous hair. Right. But That's true. She looks so cute in her little pink bathrobe. Yeah. And I do see the Farrah Fawcett reference um, with Judith Light, especially when she had that feathered hair. So Tony starts laughing, and Angela's just staring daggers into him. <laughs> right. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I see it. Angela's like, well, you know what? I have a 745 train that I got to get to in the morning, so I really need to get to sleep. I hate to roll and run. <laughs> Is that what she says? Yeah. <laughs> So she hugs Aunt Rosa, and Aunt Rosa's hugging her warmly now, and they're both butterfly fluttering, except for they're trying to keep their hands off each other's backs because they've got flour all up over them. So Angela goes and says to Mm -hmm. Tony, I scored big. And Tony says, way to go, Farah. And then he does this big like grin smile at her, and she does it back. I believe that that is a reference to the Farrah Fawcett smile because Farrah Fawcett had a very uh, big smile. No, oh, okay. Yeah, and the that's only good. reason I know that is because when I was a kid, uh, that's how I smiled, and my parents called it the Farrah Fawcett smile. Oh, that's funny. So I'm guessing that that is that. what <laughs> that is the reference. Nan is listening; she knows. So she says good night to everyone, and she leaves. And Rosa is like, wait a minute here, you know, you've got this beautiful woman here, what's happening? So she's saying a bunch of stuff in Italian that Tony doesn't really understand. So Maurizio starts to interpret. He says, you know, Angela's so smart, so sweet. And then Maurizio says, may I add, warm, spontaneous, and beautiful. There's one way I would explain Angela. It's not spontaneous. No, no, it's the opposite. (laughs) But Maurizio doesn't know her that well. Tony says, would you lighten up? Angela and I are housekeeper and boss and nothing else. So now Aunt Rosa's saying more stuff in Italian and motioning to Maurizio and throwing stuff on the floor. And she's like, nothing? And Maurizio says, okay. She says, beautiful woman, handsome man in the same house and nothing? Tony's like, nothing. Stop it. And then she says, stupido and hits him. (laughs) Stupido. (laughs) I'm with you, Aunt Rosa. (laughs) I'm with you, Aunt Yeah, it's true. So now we cut to the dining room 
Which we have not seen, I believe, since... Uncle Nick. Yeah, the Grandpa was Nick was Grandpa there. Nick. Uh, his second right, appearance. Uncle Nick, yeah, Grandpa Nick. Right? Or was it the first time? I think the second time. Okay, one of the times. It's the one where he... Oh, no, it's the first time. Bo- quote, unquote, writes the book. No, he- I don't think so. I think it's the first time when he oh. says he's dying to Tony instead of that he's going to prison. Oh, Okay. Oh, right, and that's why Tony has the big yeah. dinner. Really? Water. We haven't seen the dining room in that long. I think so. I don't remember. Wow. Now, notice here that they're smart to have the kitchen door closed so that we can't see that there are... Oh, no, wait. The kitchen door that's is not That's not the closed. kitchen. That's the other door. I don't know what that door is. No, wait. You that's can... the door that secretly goes into the living room Yes, somehow. but behind Angela is the door where you can see that right. half the kitchen is gone. Right. You can just see the cabinets and the refrigerator and that whole row of cabinets that are below and above are gone. Uh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> they're having, this is the big Italian dinner that Tony said he was going to prepare. Now it's over, and he's like, okay, well, we're finished. I guess it's time for my big surprise. Uncle Aldo hands him a little box, and inside that box is some dirt. Yep, dirt. And raisins. Oh, yeah, and a raisin. (laughs) And at first, Tony's very confused, but Uncle Aldo says, that is dirt and a grape from your vineyard. I'm giving you 20 acres of my land in Italy. So they never really. I mean, I'm, I think we're going to see more with this. Oh, good. Later on they don't down the elaborate. road, like after that. Yeah, they really just gloss like, over that. Oh, yeah, that. he got this twenty-eight. Cool. Right. All right. What's next? Like, what does that actually mean for Tony? Is he going to be I know making I, money uh, off of this portion of land? Well, and I don't. Obviously, I don't ever remember the episodes. I thought that there was going to be some kind of like thing where he's going to have to decide whether to go to but to Italy to take care of his. But his... that does kind of happen, but okay. in a different okay. episode later on down the road. Gotcha. But yeah, yeah I mean, you would think that whatever. this is a pretty big opportunity for Tony to own twenty acres of a vineyard, yeah. vineyard in Italy. Like, I don't know if that would necessarily bring in passive income for him, or if it just means that when Uncle Aldo dies, he gets those twenty acres. So yeah, he's saying. So they say, like, here's welcome to Tony's, uh, to, I'm sorry, to Italy's newest winemaker. And Tony's very excited. Now, Aunt Rosa also has an announcement that she would like to make. She, oh, so many announcements tonight. Yes, <laughs> it's a big dinner. She says that she would like to welcome the newest member of the Miscelli family, Angela. And Angela's all like, oh, wait a minute, what? And Tony's like, oh, great, she's at it again. But... Aunt Rosa's not talking about Tony. No. Instead, she says, go for it, Maurizio. And she says, Angela's admirer has great respect and great love for her. Maurizio, all innocent and kind of dumb looking, just stands up and stares at Angela. And (laughs) and then Mona says, if you don't go for it, I will. Thanks, Mom. So (laughs) what's cut here is that... in the Roku version and Antenna TV, Maurizio just walks over to her and then they fade to black. But in the original broadcast, he actually walks over to her and he kisses her and she does the butterfly oh. flutter on his back. And then Tony says, Angela, I don't think this is the time for the butterfly flutter. So now later that evening, Angela's drying dishes and Tony comes in and she asks, you know, what are they talking about out there? And he says, they're naming all of your bambinos. Now, I guess everybody's moved to the living room because why would Tony come in that door if the dining room is actually to his right? That means he'd have to go all the way around. Yeah, but they must have been in the living room. And he says, I hope you like Isadora, Salvatore, or Aldo Jr. (laughs) Aldo Jr. Angela says, all I wanted was to make your family like me. And like, how did all of this happen? But Tony's like, it's not your fault. Like, it's my family and I apologize for them. But Angela says, you know, he's just a young boy who finds a chic, sophisticated career woman wildly attractive. And Tony, again, much like the Farrah Fawcett (laughs) reference, he's like, "Uh, what? Okay. Right. (laughs) In a sweet way. Now, out in the living room, for some reason, Aunt Rosa is showing Mona pictures of her dead husband. She carries that little book around? She does. She carries a little photo album of his funeral procession. I don't know if that's an Italian thing, but if it is, I'm glad that I never had to see that from any family member (laughs) of mine. 
And <laughs> she's like showing like, oh, here's, you know, the funeral procession. And then he- procession, here's your actual husband. And Mona's like, oh, he looks so relaxed. And then she asks Aldo, like, have you seen these? And he says yes, many times. Now, Angela and Tony come out from the kitchen and they want to make an announcement and Mona's excited just to get off the conversation about uh, Aunt Rose's dead husband. She gets up and leaves. <laughs> and Tony says, you know, I'm sorry, but we need to talk. Angela doesn't want to marry Maurizio. Now, you think. Right. <laughs> Angela doesn't want to marry the man that you just said she should marry um, five minutes ago, who she knows nothing about, who doesn't live in the country she lives in, and who is at least 12 years younger than she is. Uncle Aldo's upset. He says, this is terrible. This is awful. Aunt Rosa wants to know what he's talking about. He tells her Angela doesn't want to marry Maurizio. Aunt Rosa starts laughing, which is not at all the response they expected. So then Uncle Aldo starts laughing. And Tony's like, what is every- what's so funny? And he says, I don't know. But if she's happy, I'm happy. Because everyone's scared of Aunt Rosa. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Now, she goes over and hugs Angela again. She says, you're playing hard to get. Like, this is great. And then Tony's like, no, I mean, I think something got lost in the translation here. So Angela (laughs) tells Uncle Aldo, I don't want to marry him. I don't love him. And now Uncle Aldo's upset. He was there for, he was excited. Right. There for a wedding. (laughs) So he says, okay, well, you know, I have to respect your decision. But what if I threw in a Maserati? And then they're, they're, they're still no. So he's like, okay, well, now I got to go explain this to Aunt Rosa. Now, <laughs> after, just then. After my Maserati bribe didn't right. <laughs> work. Now, just then, Maurizio walks in with some pathetic looking flowers that I think he stole out of <laughs> Mona's garden again <laughs> in wrapped know, paper. Right. And his little dirty hat. And he goes up to Angela. Now, this is really the first time that Angela and Maurizio have even had any time alone together. For him to just say that he wants to get married to her. Maurizio hands her the flowers and she says, thank you. They're very beautiful. Would you mind putting them in the vase over there? So she gets him to walk away and she says to Tony, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to say to him? And then Tony offers that to, he'll explain it. (laughs) Again, Tony's like, let me tell someone the bad news. Right, the bad news. I'll deliver it. He says, I think it would be better if I broke the news. And Angela says, no, it's my responsibility as the object of his furious passion. (laughs) Sure. Yeah, yeah. and Tony's like, what? So he says, he's my cousin, and we have a special relationship that they've made over the last 48 hours. And Sleeping in the attic together. (laughs) And it would just be better for if I say something. So Angela runs away to that little den that we still have never seen behind the fireplace. And Maurizio goes up to Tony and is like, oh, you know, she's so beautiful. And then Tony says, okay, have a seat. I, just, I want to talk to you for a bit here. Yeah, I'm going to break the bad news to you. Yeah. He says, Angela's feelings for you, you know, she doesn't feel the same way. And he says, I know that. You know, I know that she doesn't know me that well and that she doesn't feel that way, but she will learn to love me. This is like mm. an arranged marriage from I know. the 18th century. Uh, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> He says, she'll learn to love me because I'm a Michelli. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then Tony Let's says... see how well that's working out for Tony <laughs> yeah. these days. Yeah, not so much. Tony tells Maurizio, you know, you couldn't have picked a finer woman. And Maurizio agrees. He says she's elegant, sophisticated, intelligent, and she has a great pair of legs. Tony's like, he can't, he can't deny that right. one. Right, not like, going to argue yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, they are. And uh, Maurizio says, and she loves the country life because she got excited over some biscuit making Right, in the so kitchen. suddenly she loves the country life. <laughs> and then Tony says, yeah, she's a real mini pearl. So right. we looked that up. Right. You want to go? Well, no, I, I mean, I, it just, she was on Hee he Haw, which yeah. I guess that's the country Life yeah, when she was a comedian who performed at the Grand Old Opry. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, so she yeah, just yeah. must have really oh, yeah, been right. like a country for more than 50 kind of years. icon. She performed there for more than 50 years. Oh, wow. That's insane. 1940 to 1991. Wow. Okay. And then so she, she was, was on the television there. show Hee Haw from 69 to 91. Okay. Yeah, so she was on Hee Haw and performing there while this show was on the air. Good for so her. So that was a pretty um, relevant reference then. That's good for her. And Tony says, the problem is her life is here, 
and this is where she needs to be. Like, I don't, what is Maurizio's end game here? I don't know. That Angela's going to leave the business that she started and move to the vineyard and marry Maurizio. Uh, he jumped right into the deep end. <laughs> really did. I don't think he thought this through. No. At all. And then what if they, when he gets there, she's, he's going to realize that she's kind of nerdy. Right. And uh, very high maintenance. And what if he doesn't like that? Then he's stuck with a wife in Italy. Where's Jonathan gonna go? I know. I they, mean, she, he just bring in John. She bring in Jonathan with him with her. Or lot Tony of gets Jonathan. I know, here. This is all ridiculous. Everybody that on too. this show wants to get married super quickly, except for the two people on the show you that want to get to married. Get, right. right. Maurizio says, "I know there will be problems, but love destroys problems. everything." It's so funny. <laughs> and then I Tony love the says, "You mean love conquers all?" And then he says, yes. He, and he says, I'm crazy for this woman. I'm so crazy for this woman that I don't understand what that means. And my accent is horrible. <laughs> but now Tony's like, he's got to take a different tactic here. So he's like, look, you know, An- Angela and I have grown very close over the past few years. And we have a confused relationship, but that's how I want it to stay. Okay. <laughs> I'd like it to stay that way. So I think Maurizio gets the idea here like that Uncle Tony or Cousin Tony actually has feelings for Angela, and that's why he doesn't want him to marry her. So he says, you know, I'd never do anything to hurt you, and I understand. Tony says, it's a shame that I had to wait 20 years to meet you, and everything's all all fine now. Maurizio no longer is going to want to marry Angela. Yeah, just, just like that. <laughs> So he, Tony says, are you okay? And he says, I'm a little sad, but I'll be okay. And he says, if anything, you know, this has been a great Ameri- a great tri- adventure to America. Yeah, see? So I the came here. The glass is half full. Yeah. I met my cousin. I fell in love. And I lost a woman. And then he's like, wait a minute. Actually, that's not so great. But he <laughs> says, but I got this cap. And he points to the dirty cardinal's okay. hat. Okay, well, there you go. And Tony says, you know... And you still have three days left, so I'm going to take you to the Rockettes. 50 girls, 100 legs. <laughs> and they do something like this, and then they start doing the rocket kicks. And Mauricio gets in on it. He's excited. So now it's to the day when the family has to leave. Jonathan comes down the stairs with two su- suitcases. So in this entire episode, Jonathan carried two suitcases up the stairs. Yes. And then he carried two suitcases down Back the stairs. Back downstairs, yes. <laughs> oh, he had the Uganda flag. Yeah. He's... And, then, and, and that is all he did. And Sam, too. Like, she, I mean, why was this girl even here? Like, they could have not had this other cousin come to America, and we would have never noticed. Yeah, that's she true. She did nothing, and she added nothing to the story. And then the only thing was, like, the one line about the Bruce Springsteen. And now here... They come, she comes down the stairs with Sam, and she thanks Sam for her Bruce Springsteen poster. And then Sam thanks her for teaching her about Italian art, or Italian history. She had no idea that Gucci started in 1903. See? Learned yes. something new. <laughs> now it's time for Maurizio to say goodbye to Angela. So he goes over to her and he says, I will never forget you. For me, America will always mean the Statue of Liberty, the Rockettes... And Angela Bauer. <laughs> Jeez. So all those rockets, and he still got Angela Bauer on the mind. And all those legs. She, oh, yep. All one. And like, but okay. So what, what was it again? The Statue of Liberty, the Rockettes, and Angela Bauer. So that's like three things, and it's all in New York. <laughs> right. That's all I know. That's all America's gonna be. And she says, "To me, Italy will always be youth and passion." Mm. Now that's cute. At right. least it's more of a metaphor. Right. And, uh, <laughs> I like the Rockettes. <laughs> right. Then some lady holding a torch, a bunch of legs, and Angela Bauer. Mona says, come on, Maurizio. I want the neighbors to see you walk me out. Mona, all Mona did was be super creepy this I whole know. episode. I know. <laughs> so now it's time for Aunt Rosa to say goodbye to Angela. And Angela's trying to get a hug out of her. And she's like, you know, um, goodbye and thank you. And... Aunt Rosa, again, just extends her hand for a handshake. But Tony's <laughs> like, you guys can't leave like this. Like, it's not right. It's not Italian. So now Tony goes over to Uncle Aldo and starts 
whispering something in his ear very aggressively. I know, I know, like all intense. Yeah, like he grabs the side of his face and starts whispering, and then he does it again, and he's getting all like angry and acting like a pouty kid. And then Aldo goes over to Aunt Rosa and whispers something into her ear. Then Aunt Rosa is like, are you serious? And they both hold up their hands like, swear. And Aunt Rosa gets very excited. She yells, Angela! And then she gives her a big hug. And Angela doesn't know what to do, but she's just caught up in the excitement. I know. she's and yeah. she's going to take any hug she can get. That's right, at this point. <laughs> so, yeah. So, she's like, oh, yay! And she, there she's hugging and butterfly fluttering yeah, and very excited. Hands are going. Yep. Aunt Rosa grabs her bag and leaves. Then Uncle Aldo gives her a big, excited hug. And as Tony goes to shut the door, she says, wait a minute. What did you say to them? And he says, um, I, I told him we'd probably get married someday. And she's like, what? And he's like, I had to make peace with the family somehow. And then he shuts the door. But then Angela gives a big smile. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And she's thinking, maybe we will. Yeah. But, you know, who knows? And that was it. That was the tag. Yeah, yeah. it was fitting. <laughs> Uneventful. Okay, you go first. What am I doing? A rating. Rating. Um... All right, I uh, I went I went kind of low with this one. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I I uh, I was I'm I'm struggling between two numbers. Okay. I'll just say I'll go with the lower. I went with a five and a half. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow, you really didn't like this episode. I I just don't. Yeah. I didn't understand it <laughs> at all. <laughs> I mean, like it's like they come to visit, you know. Uh, oh my God, what's his name? Maurizio. Falls in love with her. And then they basically say, you know, she doesn't love you back too bad. And then he's like, it's okay. I got, right. my, got my baseball <laughs> hat. You know, like, I, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I got nothing out of this episode. Except the only redeeming quality or things on this episode is the little things between Tony and Andrew. Right, right. At the beginning and then all throughout the episode and stuff. So Yeah, and Tony telling us. But yeah, so I gave it a 6.5, and I guess I probably should have gone lower if based no, on I nothing mean, but the fact that we're only 45 minutes into this podcast and we've completed the episode. Yeah, we Which means we didn't have a lot to nothing. talk about. <laughs> yeah. And there wasn't a lot of Mona in it. Of course, the kids were very little as yeah. usual. And uh, it all took place in the house. I don't know. There just seemed like they... It was like um, forced is the word I wanted to get through this episode or to make this episode. Yeah, I just feel like there were too many characters and too much yeah, going on. Probably that too. With not enough storyline. I never saw completed biscuits. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I know, like w- they set up the vineyard thing, but it had nothing to do with the episode. Right. They really well, use that's. The girl. I'm sorry. I'm so glad you just said that. That's another thing. I thought maybe something was going to happen with that, where Tony had to make a decision if he was going to move to Italy. Right. And right. then like nothing. Or came up with a box of dirt again. That was it. And he, he didn't seem very like. I mean, if someone just gave you twenty acres of acres land of Italy, land and yeah. a winery, you'd be really excited. I know, like that's the most interesting thing that happened in this episode. I want to know more about it. I mean, he could probably quit. At, at least say to Angela, listen, if you marry Maurizio, will you go um, send me pictures back of my land? Of my, yeah. Well, I'm still here cleaning your house and taking care of Jonathan. Right. So, <laughs> Yeah, but I went with a um, 6.5. Okay. I don't know. It was a pity 6.5. Well, no, I don't base it. You, that's what you thought. I just went. I was struggling between a 6 and a 5.5. And wow. Yeah, and now that I've just, we just did the podcast, I, I got angry. So I went <laughs> fine. I know, because sometimes I enjoy the episodes more when we do the podcast, but I don't think I did. This one, yeah, there weren't a lot of redeeming qual. I don't know, just didn't do much for me. Yes, I do like the... I'm sorry, I need to wrap this up, but I do like the fact that Tony basically tells his family, eh, we're probably going to get married someday, which is all they wanted to hear from the beginning anyway. Right, right. <laughs> and, let's just say that to kind of pacify he, them and get them out of there. Right, and he tells Angela that too, and I love her little smile at the end. That's I know. Cute. Yeah, that, that's in one, one good part. Who's the boss around here? Me or my mother? Or maybe it's you. I went with Tony as the boss. Okay. I mean. I mean, who else? What are you going to do? Like he was saying there's nothing. Uncle Aldo. Yeah, he stepped in. First he was saying them, you know, there's nothing going on between us. Then when they decide to offer Angela up to Maurizio, he's the one that takes over and explains 
to Maurizio. Oh, that was the other thing that was cute too, is Tony gets Angela out of the room because he knows if he talks to Maurizio and tells him man to man, like, look, I kind of have feelings for her, that Maurizio is going to back off. Yeah. So he takes that on and does that. And I thought that was cute too. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely. And then Tony gets the family not to be mad at Angela anymore by telling them that they'll probably get married. So it was Tony. Yeah, I agree. I agree a hundred percent for all those reasons. Um, and also I like who else? I mean, is, is, Nobody else really. No, Jonathan just carried niche, luggage. He carried luggage for a nickel, and <laughs> want to make then, creepy uh, jokes. And Samantha just showed off her Bruce Springsteen posters. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, so she was useless. Mona, yeah, it was creepy with the jeans and all that. I wonder if that poor Laura character had more lines that were cut at some point along the way. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder that. That's true. I wonder that too. No, but I agree. Tony's the boss. Okay, so the next episode we're going to cover is. Steady as she goes, okay. which is when Jesse and Samantha decide to go steady. Okay. Oh boy, oh, that's an interesting. Yeah, it's it's a cute one. There's a couple yeah. of cute things in there. Okay, you can reach us at Who's the Boss Podcast on Instagram, Who's the Boss Pod One on Twitter, the Who's the Boss Podcast page on Facebook, which mm. I just discovered today. I can actually put our podcast episodes on the Facebook page. Oh, okay. They're going to be like videos, kind of, but if somebody likes to listen there as opposed to um, on a podcast platform or YouTube. Or you can go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast, and there you can leave us a voice message. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye. Yep. Bye. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give a big thumbs up and tell all your friends and maybe... You can tell your grandma, your mother, and y- your sister or brother. Maybe you have no siblings. Tell your dog and cats. Bye.